Good afternoon, I'm Olga Novikova. We're in Geneva, the square of broken chair, and we're present on the protest by Baluchistan House against Pakistan kill and dump policy. And Mr. Ramta Bukti, the president of Baluch Republican Party, is here to answer our questions. Hello, sir. Uh, with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's uh, reference to Baluchistan during his speech on Independence Day, the attention of international community uh, switched uh, to the situation in province. Can, can you tell us your views about this? Yeah, I have already said so many times that uh, the uh, statement of Indian Prime Minister is very wel uh, welcoming and uh, very encouraging for us. And um, because uh, what uh, was happening in Balochistan for last 50 years, the Pakistani army and Pakistani government was trying their best to hide the facts and stopping the, all the media and international media and, and NGOs uh, to go and visit Balochistan. So this is the first time that the responsible um, uh, state of uh, India, um, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi Saab, uh, talked about Balochistan and raises uh, concerns that what's happening there. So I think it's very good. Now uh, each and every uh, part of uh, India people are aware of that uh, uh, problem, uh, the problem of Balochistan. And internationally now people are talking about that uh, topic people want to know more about Balochistan that what's going on so I think this is a very positive and a very good step from uh, Indian Prime Minister how do you plan to maintain your momentum of resistance against Pakistani government uh, we are already doing a lot but um, as I said before that to Prime Minister Modi Saab uh, uh, raises this question um, so we hope from the Indian government uh, please continue this and especially the Indian media to please continue this uh, so we all together can I think uh, can uh, build up the momentum uh, for the rights of the people of Balochistan. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, I'm Olga Novikova, we're in Geneva near the UN, the square of broken chair and this is the protest against Pakistani government policy and Mr. Tarek Fateh, the executive director of the Balochistan House, is here with us to answer our questions. Hello, sir. Uh, can you tell us, please, how Pakistan has been suppressing the Baluch people? Well, in one word, militarily, uh, they invaded Balochistan in March 1948 and uh, sent their army to d d destroy all structures of Balochistan society. And today, there's uh, almost six, seventy years later, the only thing Pakistan has done in Balochistan is to kill, plunder, and uh, abuse uh, not just the people of Balochistan, Balochistan's culture, its heritage, its language, its cuisine, its leadership, its family structure, everything that was secular, liberal, and progressive about Balochistan society has been plundered by uh, the, the barbaric Pakistani army that's primarily uh, uh, recruited from Punjabis in, uh, in northern Pakistan.
Uh, what kind of support are you seeking from the international communities in order to help the Baluch people? Well, first of all, I think the international community ha should uh, 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 step on Pakistan to allow journalists to visit Balochistan. It is the only conflict zone in the world where uh, the a military government has uh, said that no journalists allowed. And uh, um, uh, male uh, reporters, especially the ones who wrote for The Guardian and elsewhere, were not just expelled from Pakistan, they were barred from, with, from their organizations to even co cover the region. Carlotta Gaul, who came to write about Balochistan, was beaten up in a very hotel by Pakistan's internal security guards. Uh, reporters have been raped, reporters have been uh, tortured, expelled and killed. 17 journalists have so far died and uh, no other place in, uh, uh, in c contemporary co uh, conflict has seen the absence of any human rights organizations. Neither the Red Cross, nor UNICEF, nor uh, the United Nations human rights uh, organizations are interested. We are very grateful that the Prime Minister of India, representing the world's largest democracy, has brought up this issue on the international frame. And uh, I can assure you that India is not a country that can be ignored. Uh, it is the largest, uh, not only the largest democracy, it has never seen a dictatorial government in all its checkered history. It has a 5,000 year old civilization that is just next door to Balochistan. Uh, Balochistan and Hindustan are historically neighbors and the support of the Indian society, India's population and India's political uh, leadership means a lot uh, for us um, and that is why you see people have come out in our support and tens of thousands of those who have given their lives over the last 70 years I would say hundreds of thousands will never see their effort going to waste one day inshallah Balochistan will be an independent country it will represent peace democracy secularism and a front uh, against the rising tide of Islamism and the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda and LET. The way to stop international Islamic terror is to liberate Balochistan and make it into a secular progressive Muslim society. I have one more question. What in your opinion is the way forward for the Baloch people? You see the struggle has to be multifaceted. There are friends of mine like Dr. Um, um, you know, Baloch uh, uh, um, in, uh, um, uh, in, in, in the mountains uh, who are fighting um, uh, against uh, uh, the Pakistan army. There are political forces, there are political parties like the Baloch L L Republican Party. There are people within Pakistan, within parliament, people uh, like Sadar Akhtar Mengel. So uh, there are multifaceted ways in which any liberation movement fights. When India was fighting for its freedom uh, from Great Britain, there, were, there was Bhagat Singh, there was um, uh, Gandhi, there was Bacha Khan, and then there was Netaji. So every freedom struggle has, has multiple facets. We are a think tank at the Balochistan House. We do our part. Then we have um, you know, Dr. Allah Nazar's guerrillas who are fighting. Then we have um, uh, people like Mehran Mari who represent uh, at the United Nations. Uh, Mr. Baramdag uh, Bukti has a, uh, is a political party. And then there's the Baloch National Movement, um, which is largely in the south of, the, of Balochistan. That is a largely middle class organization that's fighting for women's rights, fighting for the rights of the minorities to have a modern day Balochistan and these all these people will have to come on a table and come up with a draft constitution of we the Balochistan people and then declare to the world this is the hope of the future this is where you can fight all the evil that Pakistan has brought to this world we make Balochistan independent Pakistan goes into the garbage bin of history and our problems will be solved Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mehran Mori, the Baluch representative to the UN and the European Union, is here with us today to answer our questions. Mr. Mori, uh, what are the demands of the Baluch nationalists? 
I think the demands are very plain and simple. We were occupied illegally in 1948, on the 27th of March 1948. We want the restoration of our sovereignty, integrity, and we want Pakistani forces to pull out of Balochistan and uh, leave Balochistan. We want our independence back and our uh, request has been very clear from day one. We have never minced our words and we have always been very clear in what we want and expect and what are we struggling for. We're str struggling for the freedom of Balochistan. Uh, can you tell us about the conditions of human rights in, in Balochistan? Yeah, as we hear <coughs> the vigil for the dead and the disappeared, the human rights situation is, uh, is miserable in Balochistan because Pakistani government since its occupation has been carrying out human rights abuses in Balochistan to continue their control and subjugation and occupation of Balochistan. But in recent years uh, they have intensified and uh, new policy of kill and dump has been adopted by them, which we are uh, here to uh, show the world, where tens of thousands of people have been forcefully disappeared and many of them have turned up as in bullet ridden bodies, dumped in different areas. So the human rights situation is very bad. Overall, human welfare is very bad in Balochistan because this, we're living under military occupation for the past 70 years. Thank you, sir. Mr. Richard Chernitsky, the member of European Parliament, is here with us to answer our questions. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, you have raised the issue of Balochistan on various forums. Uh, could you tell us more about your views on the Baluch issue? Well, it's the real problem for also the European Union and the European Parliament because uh, it's not only internal problem of Pakistan, because uh, Pakistan is our important partner, our EU partner, uh, uh, economic and political partner, and obviously, uh, if we uh, we have the cooperation, uh, our partner should respect uh, human rights and normal standards. Uh, the problem is that uh, we can observe the rise of uh, brutal violence uh, in Balochistan uh, more than 300 uh, uh, accidents uh, last year uh, more than 500 people were died uh, and uh, frankly speaking uh, I see the alternative the government in Karachi uh, doesn't control the situation in Balochistan and accept uh, or tolerate the extremist uh, group uh, or maybe uh, support this extremist group uh, which uh, uh, brutally exterminate uh, of uh, Baluchi people. One more question. How could European Parliament and the European Union help the Baluch people? Well, very important question. I think uh, we can organize as soon as possible the special debate in the European Parliament uh, and uh, show uh, what's happened in Balochistan last uh, month uh, and also uh, we can uh, organize uh, official protest uh, uh, in the European Commission uh, and uh, I think European public opinion must react for the situation because uh, our silence in this issue will be our shame. Thank you, sir.